Go and wash your booty and read the book. Hi folks. This time I want to read something to you from this book, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. And I found something that I really need to read this to you. So listen carefully. It is public knowledge that since the 1960s academic standards have declined. Why? Quite simply, over the past 20 years, our schools have not placed emphasis on academic achievement. There has instead been a shift towards psychological development and social adjustment of students in the affective domain, that is, their feelings, attitudes and opinions. The shift began in 1965 with the passage of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act ESEA. since 1965. Billions of federal dollars have been allocated to educational theorists and curriculum developers to alter the course of public education. The blueprint for the process of educational reform may be found in a series of guides in innovation. From this has come a nationwide information network of ERIC, Clearing Houses, Educational Resources Information Centers, and the National Diffusion Network of Laboratories for Federally Funded Classroom Materials and Curriculum. With the new program came a retraining of the teachers. In the 1969, the Office of Education began financing model teacher education programs known as the Behavioral Science Teacher Education Program to introduce to the classroom methods employed by the behavioral scientists, the sociometrist and the psychiatrists. Such methods are the most coercive and manipulative known to men today. They were, now listen to me carefully, this is important now. They were originally developed and used for treating mentally disturbed in mental institutions and the criminally insane in prisons. A clinical psychologist gives Fred a variety of specialized tests in order to make possible a more accurate evaluation of his total personality. The techniques are role-playing, psychodrama, sociodrama, simulation games, guided fantasy, diary keeping, situation attitude scale tests and countergroups, magic circle and behavior modification such as isolation, time out boxes and coffins as well as operant conditioning. There are techniques to influence the thinking process of children in a compulsory classroom setting. In addition to training teachers, a special grade of sensitive manipulators known as change agents were trained to facilitate the process of change and to identify forces which resisted change. The change agent serves as a catalyst for teacher and citizens' awareness and attempts to gain support for educational change. Dr. John Goodland's report to the President's Commission of School Finance Issue No. 9, Strategies for Change, dated October 1971, explains that the change agents is the decision-maker. He decides which change a school will make. The report states that 5 to 15 percent of the people in a given community are open to change. They are the early ma majority and can be counted on to be supportive. A second group, 60 to 90 percent, are the resistors. They need special attention Ooh, really? and careful strategies. Also, there are leaders, formal and informal, 
and their support is critical for effecting change. In a diagram for the report, you will note that the change agents create the early majority and influences the leaders and then gets both of these groups to act in concert with him to level a triple attack on the resistors. Goodland's report to the president expressed concern about the willingness of the people to change. People cannot be forced to change until they are psychologically ready. Even if we assume for the sake of arguments that change agents are gifted with infinite knowledge and wisdom, their methods are in conflict with the political principles of democracy. Their changes in curriculum and methods and goals of education have not come as a result of democratic discussion and decisions. In this vein, it is interesting to note that the Maryland State Teachers Association has lobbied against proposed state legislation for parental access to classroom material because teachers would be effective as change agents. Okay, this is page 221. Look books. These are workbooks used in conjunction with many language arts textbooks. They are vehicles for children to reveal their reactions to short stories, often dealing with emotions and moral dilemmas. There are no right answers, only personal responses. For instance, even if your family is a happy one, you're bound to feel sad or even lonely. When might a person be lonely even if he is part of a family, loneliness is listening to your parents arguing. Loneliness is when you come home and there is no one there. Loneliness is point, point, point. Perhaps the most frequently used strategies for self-revelation are the diary and role-playing. These techniques were introduced into American public schools by an Estonian teacher, Hilda Taba, and a Romanian psychiatrist, Jacob Moreno. In 1957, a California State Senate investigative committee exposed the work of Hilda Taba, Jacob Moreno, and others. In spite of this exposure, these people continued to receive tax dollars and access to school nationwide. Hilda Tapper's program has remained in use by key change agents from 1960 to 1999. Bruce Joyce and Marsha Wheels' models of teaching mention her work as well as that of many other behavioral psychologists. As a school board directed in 1976, the writer found materials related to the above-described programs and many other described by Mrs. Lawrence in a box given to her by a home economics teacher. Needless to say, the writer was shocked to find that behavior modification was being introduced into the curriculum under the innocent-sounding home economics. The U.S. Office of Education gave grants to TABA to develop an elementary social studies program to improve the social adjustment and personality development of children. She had worked in reform schools and mental institutions with Moreno and found that role-playing and diaries were successful tools to learn where a child stood in his beliefs, attitudes and social interactions. The diary has been used for years in Russia and China for self-revelation, self-evaluation and self-criticism. More recently, the personal diary was found in Guyana throughout the Jim Jones compound. Montgomery County, Maryland requires its students to keep a diary from kindergarten through grade 9. Diaries are an important psychological instrument. They provide a precise record and personality profile of the child, his family members, neighbors and peers, information needed by the teacher or therapist to alter students' behavior or attitude. It is important that the writer be freestyle and spontaneous. 
coming directly from the emotional feeling area of the child. Diaries are not corrected for form, grammar or spelling. A teacher manual for values education suggests 15 kinds of diaries for use in the classroom. Some examples are the budget diary, religion diary, hostility and anger diary, low points diary, affectionate and tender feelings diary, and a time diary. In the psychosocial approach to education, the child is taught concepts through the use of psychotherapy. For example, to better understand the social problem of discrimination and to teach children through experimental learning. Blonde children in a fifth grade, age 10, were asked to sit in the back of the room for one week, totally isolated, not permitted to participate in the classwork for a one and a half hour period each day. Brown haired students were instructed to pick on, insult, make fun of or taunt the blondes. Needless to say, taunting spilled over onto the playground with some of the blondes being told, you can play with us. At the end of the week, blondes were given candy bars as a reward for their suffering. But the browns who in bullying were obeying the teacher's instructions were giving nothing. How does a child react to being punished or deprived or carrying out his assignment. How much learning went on in that classroom for five days? Some children enjoyed taunting and bullying. Was the week spent on such experimental learning quality time? Would this time have been better spent on academic learning? Siegfried Engelmann's Distar Reading Mastery and ECRI are both based on the very sick philosophical world view that considers man nothing but an animal, an organism. In Skinner's words, responsive to the manipulation of stimulus response, immediate reinforcement or rewards to bring about predetermined, predictable behaviors. The main thing is what, what we call schedules of reinforcement. Reinforcement is what the layman calls reward and you can schedule it uh, so that a reward occurs every now and then when a pigeon does something. And there is a good example of how you can move from the pigeon to the human case because one of the schedules which is very effective with, with rats or pigeons is what we call the variable ratio schedule and that is at the heart of all gambling devices and has the same effect. Skinner's quote about making a pigeon a high achiever by reinforcing it on a proper schedule is repeated often in this book to impress on the reader the horrifying aspect of animal training masquerading as education in these programs. He's learned his different response to each sign by being rewarded with food. So the bird isn't acting independently. Its behavior is shaped by controlling its environment. What method of instruction will be used in American classrooms? One based on the world view that man is a human being created in the image of God with consciousness, soul, intellect, creativity, free will, or on based on the new psychology of learning, scientific evolutionist research based. The world view that man is an animal whose behavior can be manipulated by creating the necessary environment to bring about predictable, conditioned responses. The reader should refer to the Internet version, which is a report of a 1960 seminar of businessmen and social scientists to discuss programmed learning and its application to business at which Professor B. F. Skinner, Arthur A. Lumstein and Robert Glaser were the speakers and discussion leaders. Robert Glaser was also a research advisor to the American Institute for Research at that time. Several pages of this report of the seminar are devoted to Glaser's principles of programming.
folks. I don't know what to say anymore. I, all I can tell you is go wash your booty and read a book, okay? Please, God bless my friends and happy reading. Can pigeons read? This one gives every indication because he's been taught to distinguish between two words and to behave appropriately.